this, and this will be about three videos in one. Um, there's a couple of things I've wanted to talk about, and of course the Dragon Gate pay-per-view is tonight. So there will be the review of that, um, also some other things. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about TNA for Monday. Also I want to talk a little bit about uh, the best of 2009 TNA DVD. So I'm just going to add all this up, um, mainly because I seem kind of out of it for this video. It's because I literally am. Um, I... Uh, I am on some pretty heavy drugs at the moment, so, um, yeah, I'm not exactly all here, and I've, I've tried doing the TNA, Best of TNA 2009 review um, a couple of times, and it just never came out the way I wanted, so I just figured I'd just lump it all um, into everything, but, um, uh, let's see, so, but I am still working on the, um, just keeping me kind of busy, I'm still working on the recommendation video, um, I've gone through pretty much most of the names. I got a lot more names this year than I did last year, so it's taking me a little while longer to go through everything. Um, I've I've gone through probably about three-fourths of it, so I got another quarter to go, and then even after that it's going to be dwindling down names, um, because a lot of the a lot, a lot of the people I got are all pretty good, so it's going to be kind of hard to, you know, decide how did you go about that, but just to let everybody know. But on to the pay-per-view um, type thing. Um, that was tonight. Uh, we have a few things. Um, Dragon Gate pay-per-view Fearless. Um, this was the latest, um, Dragon Gate show. Uh, when this show happened, it didn't sound like it was nearly as strong as the other ones, and, lo and behold, it wasn't. Um, as someone that has seen a lot of Dragon Gate, particularly Dragon Gate in Japan, um, this show felt very underwhelming, particularly since all of the matches felt like they were really good, and there was a couple of the matches, at least the last three felt like main event caliber matches, except the way that it was booked. That, Like, for example, the main event, by the time we got to the main event, I was I was drained. I, I, I really didn't care about the main event. And um, the opener didn't help much either, because it went on far too long. But um, the pay-per-view just didn't feel very good, didn't, didn't feel any excitement for it whatsoever. Um, was just very felt very lackluster watching it. Uh, there's very little to zero um, story, you know, stories, um, angles, anything like that. Um, you know, they they tried to add a few things with like Brian Kendrick and Moxley, um, and I guess the Jimmy Jacobs stuff. But really, I, I don't think any of that really works because by the time you get to the next pay per view, you kind of forget all of that. And I think one of the things, and now I, I guess, though they didn't show it on the pay-per-view, I guess one of the things that we're going to start seeing um, is kind of uh, Tommy Dreamer kind of thrown into that whole mix. But one of the things that I liked about the first two pay-per-views in particular was that the storyline, as far as the storyline-wise goes, it was pretty much Dragon Gate and... Um, and the GUSA, and it was supposed to, or Dragon, it was Dragon Gate and, and, uh, bah, 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 Shikar. There we go. Um, told you that's pretty drugged up. Uh, which was, you know, it was Jakar trying to, you know, having a little feud with Dragon Gate. Um, I liked that. I thought that worked out pretty good because that was a story that was pretty easy to tell. It, it was, you know, here you have Shikar who's trying to get, you know, revenge or honor or whatever against Dragon Gate. And, made a lot of sense, it was very easy storyline, you had promotion versus promotion, really didn't need to do a lot, and then you could add, you know, um, just rivalry matches if you wanted, and I thought that worked out pretty good, but that's not exactly what we have gotten since then, and I think it's kind of hurt things, but anyways, uh, we started off with, speaking of that, um, Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw versus Super Crazy and Seema, um, which is a match that kind of came from, um, which is a continuing storyline of the thing I talked about um, with <coughs> Chikara and Dragon Gate and the whole uh, Jorge Rivera angle type thing. And this match would have been really good if it wasn't for the fact it went about 10 minutes, 10 minutes too long. Um, this just kept going and going and going and going. And probably, you know, Gabe's biggest, I would say, fault is the fact that, you know, by the time you get to the end of the show, of one of his shows, you've seen just about everything there is to see. 
And so I think in particular tonight it hurt the main event, and I think it hurt some of the other matches tonight as well. And I think just the length of this and the fact that guys were just kicking out of everything, you were just like, well, you finished the freaking match already, um, kind of hurt this. There was a lot of great spots. There was a lot of great action. But overall, after it was done, I was like, you know, did I really see anything that was truly great, or did I just see a lot of pretty moves? I mean, that's kind of how I felt. And I wanted the match to end, and it never ended. And that's not good. So, and eh, it is what it is. Uh, then we got TJ Perkins, who I've not seen TJ Perkins since he, I guess, left WWE Developmental. Um, looks pretty jacked at the moment, I, I will say, versus Green and Akuma. Um, this, I thought, was like the complete opposite of the opener. I, I, it wasn't very long. Um, it started off kind of slow, actually, and just kind of built. And by the time we got to the end of the match, it was pretty good. I, I, I kind of liked it. Um, I liked the ending. I, I liked, There wasn't in much about this match I didn't like. It was just kind of kind of there. And uh, I thought it was overall, I thought I enjoyed it as much as the opener because by the time we got to the end of the opener, I was so pissed off at the opener. So there we go. Um, I've got Brian Kendrick versus Jimmy Jacobs. This was kind of more of a storyline thing. Uh, they did a couple of good things. It was an okay match. Nothing blow away. Uh, they, they brought out Lacey, which was kind of strange in my opinion, um, and then Brian Kendrick kind of used the Lacey to beat Jimmy Jacobs. It was storyline-wise, there was a lot of storyline to it and nothing that I really liked. Um, also, the fact that, you know, this was probably the match that got the most mic time, and unfortunately, the mic sucked, as it has for pretty much most of the Dragon Gate shows. Something I would hope they fixed, they've not, so there we go. Um... Then we got the Davey Richards match. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the guy's name that he took on. Um, uh, but uh, this was probably the weakest of, of the Davey Richards matches. Um, this was for the FIP title. Um, and of the Davey Richards matches that have been on Dragon Gate. Um, it wasn't bad. It was just kind of there. Um, it felt the same way. It just kind of felt like it was, you know, a really good match, but nothing that was blow away, nothing that was that was just, wow, go out of your way to see. Um, some cool moves, but nothing that you hadn't seen before. It just felt like, literally like you'd seen everything. It was nothing you hadn't seen before, so it was just kind of there. And unfortunately, I think that's, I said that when I did the first Dragon Gate show. Um, when I reviewed the first one, you know, everyone was going to praise it, particularly people who hadn't really seen Dragon Gate. But that once you start seeing more and more of it, it starts to wear on you. You start to kind of expect the same things. It's not as spectacular as the first time you see it. And, you know, maybe that's that's being a bit overly critical, but there is a point where you're like, too much is too good of a thing, kind of thing. But um, they exchanged a lot of kicks. Um, they, they did... Uh, an angle where Davey uh, kicked the ring post, which hurt his leg. Um, Davey did his stupid dive out to the crowd. I'm calling it stupid now because at this point, every time he goes out, he just misses the guy and just lands in the crowd. And it's just like, really? Do we really need to see this all the time? Um, but it was what it was. Uh, then we had uh, Yoshino, Doi, uh, the Young Bucks, or Generation Me. They were in their Generation Me outfits, taking on Shingo and uh, Yamato and an elimination uh, three-way tag. Uh, this was really good. This probably, again, this suffered from, I think, the same thing that the opener suffered from, that it just went too long. Literally, when the Young Bucks were the first team to be eliminated, were eliminated, um, I was kind of like, wow, the match is over. And then I realized, oh, no, it's still going to go on. And I was like, I really don't want this match to go on any longer. Um, but it was really, I mean, the, there was lots of cool moves, lots of cool spots, um, lots of good action. But after the match, it was kind of like, well, what did I see? There, there was nothing. That, it wasn't a memorable match. It was just like a great match. And um, But and definitely the best match I thought on the card. The card, the match I enjoyed the most on the card. Um, felt really good and all that sort of thing. Uh, then we got the main event, BB Hulk versus Dragon Kid. Uh, the live crowd was burnt out. I was burnt out by the end of this, by the, by the time we got here. Uh, I may be underrating this. I don't know. Um, I just felt like very, it felt very lackluster after everything we saw, which I think is probably the biggest problem with a lot of this stuff is it's just that, you, you know, you're not building to, uh, building to the main event, which I, I think, you know, I, a lot of people have said that's Gabe's biggest flaw. He always says, yeah, but you know, you, you want to put on the best matches possible. I understand that, but you also want to highlight your main event. So, 
you know, people can debate about that all they want. Um, thought the match was really good, but again, not, not anything blow away. Um, you know, really, <coughs> if you look at the matches, um, there was nothing really bad on here, and everything was, was, that was either really good to, to, a lot of the stuff was really good to great, but, you know, it felt very lackluster as a pay-per-view. The overall pay-per-view just felt very, very lackluster, and, um, you know, I, I, I would, I would kind of say the bloom is kind of, you know, off the rose of, of Dragon Gate a little bit, and that Gabe probably needs to, you know, do a little bit more. You know, I, I really think he needs to use more of the Chikara guys myself instead of just continually bringing in the Dragon Gate guys. I think that the Chikara guys are good enough, um, particularly there's a lot of Chikara guys that are really good enough to come out and, um, you know, fill up the undercard and not, you know, put on these incredible matches that will blow away the crowd. I think the one thing about the Chikara guys is they can go out there and, and do a type of match that, while it looks like Dragon Gate, is different enough to, from Dragon Gate where you don't feel like you're seeing the same type of match over and over and over again, which, you know, can be a problem. Um, didn't really enjoy this. Actually, I, I think, and I can't remember, wherever the last... Dragon Gate pay-per-view from Japan I saw, um, which I've never actually reviewed any of those, just because I just never felt kind of like it, because usually I, I watch them, you know, um, not all together, but um, I felt that was better than this, to be honest, and I, I didn't feel like this was nearly up to the standard as, as the other ones, which is too bad, because it has to be better than this. I felt this was good, even though it had a lot of great stuff on it, I just felt it felt very lackluster. This would probably come off very, very good on DVD, because you could just watch a little bit of it, turn it off, watch a little bit more of it, turn it off type of thing. But as a pay-per-view, didn't really come off as good as I probably sh should have. Um, so there is that. Now, there is um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this DVD. Best of 2019. Um, <clears throat> most of you probably do not remember, but when the Best of 2007 DVD came out, um, I did review it. I went out and bought it. I don't buy a lot of TNA DVDs particularly a lot of recent ones, because I, I just, there's most of them, you know, I'm not a collector of DVDs like some guys are, or a collector of shows. Um, I get the stuff that I think is good, and usually I'm more of a collector of matches than I am DVDs. So, I, I you know, I, best dubs to me are, are really cool. And um, whenever anyone always says, you know, what would you like to do if you ever had a job in the wrestling business, actually it would be putting stuff like this together, because, um, you know, this DVD is really good. Um, pretty great, actually, if you want to get technical. Um, I thought that it was, it was, uh, you know, I thought they, they did a pretty good job of putting, um, of highlighting a lot of the things they probably needed to highlight. They put, uh, probably the best women's match TNA has had in who knows how long, um, in Sarita versus Alyssa Flash. Um, they also, uh, but... There was, of course, stuff on here that I didn't think needed to be on here. Luckily, they didn't forget about Kurt Angle versus Jeff Jarrett from, I think it was Genesis, um, last year, which was, you know, an amazing match. Um, and then you went through this big drought period of, of unamazingness that we had at the end of the year. But they did stick some stuff on here. I was kind of like, Ugh, really? Um, you got AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle from Impact, but not the one before Bound for Glory. You got the tables match, and I don't think the tables match is nearly as good as the one from, you know, right before Bound for Glory. I would think that would be the match you would want to put on here. Didn't put that on here. If you had the Sting versus Kurt Angle, um, empty arena match, I'm not big on that match, so, you know, really. Uh, we also got, um, as I said, Kurt Angle versus Jeff Jarrett. I'm a big fan of that match. Um, I'm glad that was on here. You got the Bound for Glory Ultimate X. You know, really, you could probably roll the dice with this or the Destination X Ultimate X. I like the Ultimate, the uh, the um, Destination X Ultimate X better, only because I think that you're you're trying to release the DVD just with the highlight TNA, and I don't think you want this Ultimate X only because you know the the Ultimate X structure was very rickety. It looked like it was going to fall down at any moment. Didn't really have that problem with the other one. And also, the spot at the end of the Destination X one, I think, is a better spot, um, even if it's not as spectacular as the one that ended, uh, you know, the Bound for Glory one. But, you know, people are going to disagree. We got Sting versus AJ Styles. That was probably the biggest marquee. You know, you want Sting on the DVD. I understand that. But still, 
Um, you know, I don't have any problem. That's probably the one match I would say, okay, I understand why that's on here, but still. And luckily, we got Desmond Wolf and Kurt Angle and AJ Styles, Smojo, and Christopher Daniels from uh, Turning Point. Um, as the DVD from the pay-per-view is not out yet, which I hope once it comes out, um, I've heard rumors it might be released in a three-pack. And if that's the case, then I hope everyone goes out and buys this, this set because, honestly, it's a good message to send to TNA, particularly now. <clears throat> Overall, it's a pretty good DVD. It's very low. F there wasn't much on it. Um, you could probably, I would say, um, you know, right now, as I'm making this video, um, for the weekend you're making this, uh, I, I think TNA has a 30% off sale right now. Actually, if you go in and type in, I think it's Hulkamania, I think you get 30% off anything on the DVD on the site, which I think I think they sell it for $14.99, this DVD. So you can get it for, what, about 10 bucks. And then, of course, if you go to Ring of Honor, I think they sell it for $13.99. When they have one of their good sales, you can get it there, too, for pretty cheap as well. Um, and then whatever High Spot sells it for as well. And not that they do a lot of a lot of sales, but there you go with that. Um, but I would definitely recommend getting it. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in when a company releases something that you enjoy, go out and get it. Um, particularly me, because this is the type of thing I wish WWE would release. I know we got the best of Raw uh, this year, but we didn't get a best of SmackDown, and I think most of us would much rather have a best of SmackDown, or even better, would have had a you know a best of the TV matches from uh, the WWE. I'd be happy with that because WWE puts on so much TV. I think you could easily fill you know a pretty good DVD full of great TV matches the WWE puts on. So. <clears throat> You know, and for that matter, I wish you know HDNet would release a Blu-ray of you know the best um, matches that ROH has had on HDNet for that matter. So this is the this is literally the type of DVD I wish more companies would do, and uh, we don't really see that too often. Of course, we didn't get a Best of 2008 last year, which you know kind of sucked as well. So there was that, which leads us right into, of course, uh, this Monday we're going to have the big giant nasty return of the Monday Night Wars officially. <coughs> Maybe uh, for those of you that do not know, um, TNA this last week, which the impact absolutely sucked, um, sucked complete ass in my opinion. Um, you know, got a 1.1 rating. I believe that's rounded down. I think they got a 1.14. I think, and um, so I think it, that's rounded down. But still, not a good show. And the the, the show apparently started off really good. Um, and as far as the rating, and then went completely south. And the lowest uh, rated segment was actually the main event um, segment with uh, Flair and Hogan and all that stuff, which was supposed to be you know the big selling point for Monday night. So that's not so good. Uh, not that you know, and and that's not to bury TNA. That's not to you know um, anything like that. It's just that's just the name facts. And for those of you that do not know, I'm sure most of you, there is highly, 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 highly rumored. Um, apparently, TNA's even kind of ticked off at, at Hogan, apparently, for letting this out, that uh, RVD has apparently signed with TNA and will be on the Monday show. If that is the case, TNA is being stupid and should be talking about this to no end in sight, talking about the fact that RVD is going to be on your show. Um, pimp the crap out of RVD because, in my opinion, he is the one guy you have on the show who can probably, people will go, RVD is going to be on the show, I will watch the show. And you're not doing that, you're going to leave it to a surprise. Well, you have to hope that the people who are watching see the surprise. If you tell people that you know, RVD is going to be on the show before, then it won't be so much of a surprise. Then, then yes, you don't have a surprise, but you have people turning into see RVD. I think that is the that that is the bigger thing in my opinion. Um, Sting supposedly is supposed to be on the show as well. Uh, the main event, which I'm not looking for too forward to, particularly as we have continued to see this um, of Hogan and Flair. Hogan looks like he can barely move. Um, I thought that the whole Abyss angle started off really good, as cheesy and as crazy and as, as stupid as it is. I thought it started, I thought that, that first promo between Abyss and Hogan was excellent, and I think it's really gone completely downhill. I think Flair's been too crazy, and I think it's hurt the angle, and I think that it's been too cheesy and all of that. And of course, you know, I, I just don't know where TNA is going to go with this, because the rating doesn't seem good. If they continually put on like they have the last two um, impacts, uh, this show's going to get decimated. 
Um, it's not different enough from WWE, and it's definitely not the type of show people want to see. On top of that, you add to the fact that you know they're putting all their eggs into uh, this Monday show into lockdown. They basically, by the time we get to lockdown, they would have sold. I guess you could you could say theoretically four pay per views, but realistically three. Um, three pay-per-views under the bus and Genesis um, against all odds and Destination X. Um, you know, realize I think Monday the wrestlers and the announcers I think I heard talk about mention lockdown at least maybe 20 times. We heard I think one once a, a, a Destination X even talked about it, even though we saw the posters and everything didn't really talk about it, really didn't, you know, mention it too much. That's retarded. Um, you know, I understand you're trying to build towards lockdown. That's fine. But to me, what they should have done, if they wanted to say, okay, we don't care about these three pay-per-views, fine. Don't care about them. Just throw, you know, don't throw stuff on there that you think will draw, but throw stuff on there that you know will at least be good and that you'll put on a good or great matches on the pay-per-view. That's what they should have done. Instead, they've just kind of just thrown these pay-per-views, it seems, together. I think Against All Odds had hope of being really good, and then I think the booking kind of hurt it. And then I think Genesis just, I don't know, Genesis just was not as good as it needed to be because those, those pay-per-views need to be great. Good is not good enough. They have to be great. And people might say that's not fair, but, hey, life's not fair. They're sorry. But, you know, it is what it is, and um, looking forward to Monday, but, you know, because... Time to, put, time to put the Triple H hater hat on. I would love, love for RVD to show up and pop the biggest rating TNA's ever had in a segment. I would love that. Not that I see that happening, but I would love that just to say, look, WWE, yes, the guy's a pothead. I understand he's a pothead, but, you know, back when you didn't care about him being a pothead, you know, you could have pushed him into something big, and you didn't. And, you know, now TNA has him. So I would love, love, love for him to pop. You know, and I don't mean like, you know, a 3 or a 4 rating. I mean, you know, maybe maybe like a 1.9 or almost a 2. Just his one little segment, just to, just, just to prove the point. But that's just me. Um, like I said, talking about a lot of stuff. So for those of you that stuck around with me. Thank you. Like I said, I don't know when I'm going to do another video. Um, it'll probably be the recommendation video. Um, the meds I'm on are pretty heavy duty and, and leave me kind of medicine heady and eh, all this stuff. It's not very fun at work, to be honest. But anyways, uh, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Later.